Welcome to Movie Reviews. I'm Jared Ross, and today we'll be looking at the 1939 classic, The Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz was directed by Victor Fleming and stars Judy Garland, Ray Bolger, Burt Lauer, Jack Haley, and Margaret Hamilton, and is based on the children's novel The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum, and it follows Dorothy Gale and her dog Toto, who are swept away by a tornado from their Kansas farm to the magical land of Oz, and embark on a quest with three new friends to see the wizard, who can return her to her home and fulfill the other's wishes. The Wizard of Oz has always been a childhood favorite of mine. I still clearly to this day remember watching it on our brand new DVD player at the time and watching it over and over. I was definitely one of those kids that was terrified of things like the tornado and the Wicked Witch, but there was always something enchanting about it that made those moments that terrified me sort of subside. I just became so engrossed in the world and the story. Sadly, that was probably 15 or so years ago, and I didn't end up revisiting the film again until just a few years ago when I decided to watch all 100 films on the AFI Top 100. But I'm so glad I did, because what I loved as a kid, I loved even more as an adult. The Wizard of Oz has always been put up there as one of the greatest films ever made, and I really didn't realize what that meant until I revisited it and was blown away by how magical of a film this really is. Everything about it is, in my opinion, just perfect, from the acting to the directing to the production design, the costuming, the editing, the music, the story. All of these elements come together in a film that has truly stood the test of time, and there's a reason people still talk about it, and it just so happens to be one of my favorite films of all time. However, it should be noted that The Wizard of Oz could have turned out very differently. For those of you that might not know, the film had a very troubled production, and it's a miracle that the film ended up turning out as well as it did. So before we get into my thoughts on the film, let's take a look at the production of it and just see how this thing was made. The production of the film began shortly after the release of Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, which proved that films based on popular children's stories could still be successful. It didn't take long for MGM to make strides to do exactly what Walt Disney had done, especially after the critical and financial success of his animated fairy tale. So MGM bought the rights to L. Frank Baum's popular children's novel from Samuel Goldwyn, and work on a live-action film adaptation of Oz began. Adapting The Wizard of Oz for the big screen proved difficult during the writing phase, and the story ended up going through some drastic changes in the process as the story floated around to different people. It was even considered toning down the fantastical elements in the film, but this was quickly changed as the producers wanted to stay as true to Frank Baum's original story as possible. Ultimately, the final draft ended up being a combination of several drafts worked on by Florence Rison, Edgar Allan Wolfe, and Noel Langley, but it would continue to see changes throughout the production. As for the casting, the role of Dorothy went to Judy Garland, who had already proven herself a talented singer, but Shirley Temple had also been considered for the role at one point. Ray Bolger would go on to be cast as the Scarecrow, but not before being cast initially as the Tin Man. Buddy Ebsen was cast as the Tin Man, but was soon recast with Jack Haley in the role, and the role of the Cowardly Lion would go to comedian Burt Lauer. As for the casting of the Wicked Witch, it went to Margaret Hamilton. The music was composed by Harold Arlen with lyrics by Yip Harburg, who would go on to win the Academy Award for Best Original Song for Over the Rainbow, and their music to this day is still considered timeless. Now, to say the production of The Wizard of Oz was a tumultuous one would be an understatement. It's pretty well known at this point that everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. 
10 days into the production, Buddy Ebsen, who was originally cast as the Tin Man, was hospitalized due to a reaction to the aluminum powder he had to wear. Jack Haley, who went on to play the Tin Man in Ebsen's absence, suffered from an eye infection due to the aluminum paste they used for his makeup. The film would also go through its fair share of directors as well. Richard Thorpe was hired as the main director for the first nine days before he was replaced due to producers believing he was rushing the production along. George Cooker would go on to replace Thorpe for a short stint while a replacement director was found. It was during this time that Oz went through its biggest change. Initially, MGM had Judy Garland in a blonde wig and baby doll makeup, but Cooker wanted to change this and told Garland to just be yourself. Obviously, because of this change, all the footage with the original director had to be reshot. Finally, though, uh, Victor Fleming was hired as the main director and production finally remained consistent. But near the end of production, Fleming had to leave to replace Cooker who had left previously to film Gone with the Wind. So then uh, King Vidor was put in charge of bringing production to its end and was responsible for filming the most memorable scene of the film where Dorothy sings Over the Rainbow. Filming for Oz was fairly exhausting for everyone involved, but it was especially rough on the cast who worked six days a week from 4 a.m. to 7 p.m., for a six month period. The sets were also incredibly hot due to the amount of lights that were on the set at any given time, causing the soundstage to reach temperatures of over 100 degrees. Hamilton's Wicked Witch makeup was toxic due to it being copper based, and at one point during filming, her makeup actually caught fire, leading to third degree burns on her face and hands. So, yeah, the production of The Wizard of Oz was a difficult one. Many people nearly lost their lives while filming, and it went through so many changing of hands that it's remarkable that it came out being as good as it ended up being. The Wizard of Oz was finally released onto the world on August 25th, 1939, and was quite the success for MGM upon its release. But its lasting presence as a classic wouldn't be felt until the 1950s when MGM sold CBS the rights to televise the film, introducing the film to a brand new audience and recognition. Now that all that is out of the way, let's get into my actual thoughts on the film itself. As I mentioned at the start of this video, The Wizard of Oz is one of my favorite movies of all time. I'm still surprised every time I watch it at how well it holds up, even by today's standards. It truly begins like a fairy tale from the very beginning and keeps this dreamlike quality until the very end. One of my favorite aspects of the film is how the filmmakers captured the beauty of Oz, juxtaposed with the mundanity of Kansas. Oz wasn't the first film to use Technicolor, but it's definitely remembered for it the most. This is a beautiful film, from the sepia tone sets of Kansas to the bright and colorful land of Oz itself. It really is magical watching this film. I will never forget the moment after Dorothy's house is caught in the tornado and she opens her front door and you are literally transported to this Technicolor dreamscape with the brightest, prettiest shades of every color imaginable. It's just a great moment overall. I mentioned before as a kid the tornado really scaring me, and I have this movie to thank for my fear of them, but I'm still amazed even now at the effects used in the creation of the tornado on the set, and if you look up the behind the scenes as to how it was achieved and how real it actually looks, it's incredible. But at the heart of the film, we have our four central characters, Dorothy, Scarecrow, Tin Man, and the Lion, and I love how simple these characters are in their wants and dreams, 
but they are so well-defined and likable. Judy Garland is an absolute star in this film, and she shines the brightest from her smile to her tearful big eyes. And when she sings Over the Rainbow, you really feel her pain and her longing. This is the song we have to thank for other great I Want songs like Part of Your World, and Garland does it with such class. And the others, Scarecrow, Tin Man, and the Cowardly Lion are expertly realized and perfectly casted. Burt Lauer as the Cowardly Lion is nothing short of iconic, and it's so great to see a film give each of these characters such a well-defined character arc that they all follow through with it, and how in the end, it's revealed that we have the ability to do anything as long as we put our mind to it. It's a great lesson, no matter how simple. I'm also taken away by how relatable Dorothy is as a character. You really are able to project yourself onto her, especially in the beginning of the film when she makes a decision and realizes how bad the decision she's made is, and she quickly tries to set things right. It's a wonderful character arc. And as someone that really likes a nice, tight structure in this movie, I'm surprised that even though it went through different writers, uh, that the script ended up being as structurally sound as it is. As a screenwriter, I really like reading and paying attention to the three acts of the story and the different beats as a way of breaking the story apart. And The Wizard of Oz happens to be one of the most perfectly structured films I've ever seen. Every beat, every plot point happens exactly when it needs to, and I love it for that. I also can't talk about this film without talking about Margaret Hamilton as the Wicked Witch. This is just one of the most iconic performances out there. You hear that laugh, that cackle, that voice, and you know exactly who said it and what film it is from. It's such a fun performance and might actually be my favorite of the film, just for the pure joy I get from watching Margaret Hamilton act. In the end, she's your typical bad guy, but it's all in the performance, which allows the character to stand out. I've already mentioned Over the Rainbow, but I feel like I need to also call attention to other tracks in the film, and they are all wonderful. Oz has one of the most memorable soundtracks of any film ever. All the songs are catchy and instantly hummable, from all the songs sung in Munchkinland to We're Off to See the Wizard to the Scarecrow, Tin Man, and Cowardly Lions songs. As for the production design and the special effects, this is quite the film. The sets are huge and grand in scale, able to hold hundreds of extras at a time, and it allows Oz to feel so massive despite all of it taking place on a soundstage, and the effects are tough notch and are still impressive even today. I already mentioned the tornado in the Kansas scenes, but the fire effects and the massive floating head of the Wizard of Oz himself are all glorious to behold. Munchkin City is so vibrant and filled with life. The Emerald City is large and slick, and the wizard's lair is grand and intimidating. But my favorite has to be the witch's castle with its dark look and it's set atop a hill and its dark corridors are so cool. And the ending, as Dorothy says goodbye to all her friends she's made along the way and wakes up to find out that everything she went through might have been a dream all along is absolutely heart-wrenching. But the joy that comes on her face when she comes to the realization that there's no place like home is just one of the most satisfying moments to any film I've ever seen. And it's such a perfect way to end this film. The Wizard of Oz is, in my opinion, a perfect film. Nothing can touch it. It has some of the most likable characters put to screen, a career-defining performance from Judy Garland, and Margaret Hamilton, and the music is just timeless. Despite all the problems the film faced during its production, and the blood, sweat, and tears shed, it all paid off because The Wizard of Oz is an absolute classic. And with all that said, I'm gonna give The Wizard of Oz a 10 out of 10.
Well, guys, I want to thank you for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. And what did you think of this new format? Would you like me to continue doing something like this in the future by giving a short rundown about the film's history before getting straight into the review? Let me know in the comments section below. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And stay positive.